Hello everyone, Amelia here. Today we are talking about how horses learn and how to train your horse. And I think it's important always to go back and remember this because sometimes in dressage we get so caught up in being perfect and riding the perfect circle and riding the perfect transition that we end up kind of tightening up and clamping on and applying a lot of pressure and a lot of aids on our horse and forgetting to release the aids or release when the horse actually does what we want them to do. So uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and comment below if you feel like that sometimes when you're riding that you're trying so hard that you just get tense and clamped and um, cause your horse to get kind of tense because you're tense. So today I'm going to give you three tips to help you teach your horse and to help you understand how horses actually learn. So tip number one is pressure and release. So the way that horses learn, we can't talk to them. Like I can't say, hey Mercurio, um, can you walk forward and pick up the canner? Because they don't speak English. So the way that horses learn is by pressure and release of the pressure. So the two main areas when you're riding that you can put pressure on your horse are either on the reins, on the bit, or with your legs. So the timing and the release of the pressure is the most important thing. So if I'm just here at the halt, let's say, if I pick up on these reins and if I put a little downward pressure on the bit, I want him to drop his head like that. So if I just apply a little pressure on the reins, he should drop his head. And every time that he drops his head, like there, I give a little release with the rein. So again, it's pressure. I just kind of wait with the pressure. There he released, I give. Pressure, I'm just gonna wait with the pressure. There he released and I gave. So this might be a little too hard for you and your horse. So sometimes if your horse is starting to back up or getting frustrated with that exercise, it's easier to do it just with one rein where you take one rein and you say, hey, can you bend? And when your horse bends, you release. So just getting them where they tip their head and when they tip their head, you release the pressure. And then same thing, you know, check that out on both sides. If you take the left rein, your horse should release to the pressure. So same thing, if you take the left rein, your horse should release to the pressure. And you notice how right when my horse takes his head around, I give, I, there's a release of pressure. So if when your horse bends, you just pull more and you never release the pressure, then they don't understand what to do to get rid of the pressure. Good boy. So horses are always searching for a release of pressure. They just want to be left alone. So when they do what you want them to do, you have to leave them alone. So let me show you a little bit how to work on this just while you're walking around. So if I want to teach my horse to give to the pressure of the bit, usually I start with just one rein. So I'll kind of take my right rein and see there he bent his head around, I give back to him. Now I walk forward again. So if I take the pressure of my left rein, he, he should tip his head, his body should follow his head and I release. And it's important just to go back sometimes if you feel like you're just clamping and pulling and kicking, just go back to something simple like this. And then you can also try where you take up both reins. See here, his head's kind of up against the pressure. So I might take my hands a little wide to put pressure on the bottom of his mouth. And when he drops his head down and in, I release. And I might even just totally drop my reins and let him go again on on, a, on the buckle, on a loose rein. So let me show you that again. If I take up the reins, I want my horse to drop his head in and keep walking, there. And when his head drops in, the pressure gets lighter in his mouth. So now let's talk about the pressure of your leg aids. So it's the same idea of pressure and release. You don't wanna be clamping all the time with your heels 
or your horse is never going to get any relief from that pressure. So if you think about like the pressure of your saddle and the girth, it's there all the time, so the horse just ignores it. Now your lower leg, you don't want to be like that. So if I close my calf, I, my horse should walk. And when he walks, I take my leg off. If he stops again, I close my calf. I might give him a little kick. And then when he goes, I take my leg off. So it's all about pressure and release. You put a pressure on, so I might close my leg again and say, come on, trot. And then when he trots, I take my leg off again. But what I see a lot of riders do is that they just do this and they just clamp and the horse trots and they're still clamped on and squeezing with their leg. And so there's never any release of the pressure. If you go around all the time and you're squeezing for all your worth and you're pulling for all your worth, you're just making your horse dull. You're not um, teaching them anything. So tip number one is just that. It's all about pressure and release of pressure to teach your horse. Now tip number two is repetition. So I'm going to show you some transitions here. We're going to first work on walk, trot, walk transitions because that's the most simple transition to start with. So I'm going around. I like, I have a nice frame. I have a nice walk. So when I want to trot on, the aids for the trot transition is close, my, put, close both my legs at the girth and he should trot like that. Now the second that he trots, I take my legs off and I leave him alone. Now if I'm trotting here and he slows down, I'm going to close my calf and, and give him a little kick and say, hey, keep going because I want my horse to just kind of stay going and stay on the bit without pressure. It should be like cruise control. Your horse should just be a little bit going on autopilot until you tell them to do something different. So now I'm going to repeat these trot walk trot transitions until I really get the reaction that I want. I want that all I have to do is barely close my calf and he trots. So here I barely close my calf. I give him a little kick because that wasn't quite sharp enough. And if he canters because I gave him a little kick, that's fine. And then I'm just going to go back to no pressure, no leg. I have like a little feel in my, in my hand, maybe a few ounces. And then I'm going to repeat again. I'm going to close my calf there. And the second that my horse trots, my leg comes off. I cannot stress how important that is. There's so many riders that their horse goes faster and they just squeeze and want more. So again, I close with my calf. He trots, my leg comes right away off the second that he trots. So taking your leg off at the right time is just as important as putting your leg on. Now, if I want more trot, I'm gonna close with my calf, give him a little kick. He cantered, so I'm not gonna punish him for that. But again, I'm gonna repeat, I'm gonna close my calf and there I got a little bit more trot yet again. Then I'm gonna go back to the walk and then I'm going to repeat. I'm going to close my calf. Good boy. So you see how as I'm repeating over and over again, the same pressure and release and the same exercise, my horse is starting to understand it. So horses, they're not smart in that they don't have a lot of cognitive function. Um, but they are real they do have a really good memory so if you keep repeating the same aid the same pressure the same release they will over time start to remember that and respond to it so same thing for the trot canter transition is i'm trotting my aid for the canter is inside leg at the girth outside leg behind the girth, 
inside hip. Good boy. And the second that he canters, I release my canter aid. Now, with this horse, so I ask for canter, he canters, I release my canter aid. Now I might have to say, hey, keep cantering. Cause did you see there how he kind of put his head up and was gonna break to trot again? So again, repetition, you might have to repeat the aid again if as needed. Good boy. Good boy, Mercurio. Okay, so tip number three is that it's all about timing and feel. So really good riders have really good timing and really good feel. So what I mean by timing is knowing the right moment to apply the pressure and the right instant when to take the pressure away. Um, so when to take the pressure away depends on feel. So in order to know when to release the pressure, you have to be able to feel when your horse gave into your leg or when um, your horse releases to the pressure. And the quicker you are to apply a pressure and release a pressure, the quicker your horse is gonna understand it and the quicker they're gonna learn. Okay, so let's do some leg yields. And I'm going to try and talk you through my timing and the pressure and release of my aids. So in a leg yield here, I want his left hind leg to cross over into the right rein. So the only time that you can influence a hind leg is when it's leaving the ground. So if I want him to move over, I'm thinking now, 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 with my leg eight to push him over. So if my horse isn't moving over, so say I start the leg yield and he's not moving over from my calf, I'm gonna kick him with my leg, I'm gonna kick him again, and then I'm gonna go back to just using my calf. So how much pressure should you use? You should use as little as possible, but as much as it takes. So you always start with that little light pressure. And then if your horse doesn't listen, you do whatever it takes to get that reaction. Now you'll notice here, as I go to the right, it's important to do the leg yields off both legs and to notice, do you need more pressure on one leg to get the horse to move over than the other? So with most horses, the answer is yes. This horse is a little harder to get to move off of my right leg because his right hind leg is weaker. So when I go up the quarter line here and I'm thinking over, 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 hey, get off my right leg, release the pressure when he moves over, good boy, and reward. So the, I cannot stress enough that the reward is so important and all of us dressage riders were such perfectionists that we forget how important it is to reward the smallest try. When your horse gives you that little try and they soften up to you, you have to reward them. Good boy, Mercurio. So just think about this as you're riding this week. It's really about pressure and release repetition and the timing of your aids. Make sure that there's clear moments where you put pressure on. And then when you feel like your horse is doing what you want, release the pressure. And if everything falls apart, then put it back together and then try to release again. Cause the last thing you want to do is be squeezing and pulling constantly when you're riding.